this is going to be a very um, kind of basic introductory look at Zoho One, which is, you know, our operating system for business. It's, it's a collection of everything that we do here at Zoho. So um, I'm going to give you an idea of kind of how to think about Zoho One, um, what are different things that are included in it, and then we'll have a short demo at the end where I'll kind of look at where you would start with Zoho One um, as far as just kind of logging in for the first time and getting your organization set up. And um, then I'll also, you know, give you some resources so you can get more questions answered um, and you can begin your, your kind of journey with us. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, and I hope it all goes well. I hope that's what you're here for. So Zoho One um, is a really unique, oh, and also I should say, I'll take questions at the end, um, but you can also ask me questions as I'm talking. Um, I might look at them from time to time and maybe I can answer some as I go, but um, in general, I'll be taking them at the end. So um, basically Zoho One is a you know, pretty unique um, offering these days because it brings together kind of all the tools that you would need to run an entire business. So this is gonna be things that go across your entire organization from marketing, sales, customer support, um, any kind of team-based productivity or communication or collaboration tools, project management tools, double entry accounting, invoicing, order inventory management, um, expense management, recruitment. Um, I mean, anything really that you would generally think that you would need in an organization we're offering through Zoho One. Zoho One um, has over 20,000 customers around the world. And we've been at this for about two years now with this product. So we've seen a lot of good traction and a lot of good success so far. And the customers range from small organizations all the way up to really, really large um, inter, uh, you know, financial conglomerates with say 30,000 employees using Zoho One. So we have a huge range of customers and we're seeing uh, success across the board. The thing that's important again to, to remember is that Zoho One is something that really gives you tools to run substantial parts of your business, if not the entire thing. When you're just getting started out with Zoho One, you don't have to think that, you know, you have to move your CRM and your accounting system and your email and your document management and your project management. You don't have to do all of this at once. Um, we really encourage you to find value where it makes sense and then create kind of a roadmap for yourself where you can continue to roll things out because any one of these projects is usually a pretty big deal. So we, we're not trying to suggest that you need to do all of this at once. So I would not, I would not take it that, that way. Um, so this is the operating system for business. This is what we call Zoho One. And we're going to kind of go into this more deeply and kind of break down some key concepts here. So um, the idea of an operating system for business, the idea that you would have one set of, of or one, one set of, or suite of, of cloud applications from one vendor to run everything you do. This is kind of a new idea. Um, and so we're, we wanna pay attention to kind of what this includes, that way you really understand what you're, what you're looking at here. So when we talk about the operating system for business, we see three uh, core layers. The first is the platform layer. The second is a services layer. And three, third, and finally are the apps or the apps layer. Now, people tend to focus on apps and there's good reason for that. Um, with Zoho and with Zoho One, you know, you get over 45 different applications in Zoho One. Um, and again, these range across the board doing all sorts of different things for you. Um, and generally speaking, we're most familiar with applications because other vendors um, make applications. They make one or two apps typically, and then they, they sell those. Um, when we think about it in our organization, applications are the things that we tend to interact with. They're the things that we sign into and that we use to do 
um, some daily activity. So we kind of live in this app-centric world, but there's been some, some general issues with that. Um, and that's why we have the operating system, which is for us a step forward. Um, and it's important to remember that a bunch of individual applications don't make an operating system, right? An operating system needs, among other things, you know, digital plumbing. If you think about it in terms of maybe a house, for example, you don't just put up four walls and say you have a house, right? There's a foundation, there's electricity, there's plumbing, there's gas lines, there's sewage lines, um, and not to, and then beyond that, there's all the furniture you put in the house, the decorations, there's, there's any number of other things that are gonna go into all of this to actually make it feel like a home, right? So that's the important kind of concept with, with Zoho One is that there's a bunch of things being put into one really slick, sophisticated and convenient package to, to power your organization. So let's look under the hood then, right? So let's let's put apps aside for now and come back to those later and start with our platform. So the platform is a crucial layer because it's what allows you to customize, extend, and integrate Zoho One, right? Um, there might need to be um, you know, integrations that need to be built to third-party systems that you are reliant on and that you really love and that you don't want to leave. You might have a proprietary system. You might have, um, you might have, um, uh, I'm sorry, like an offline kind of legacy um, system that you're, you're also using, right? Um, so, or there might be industry-specific tools that you need us to be able to integrate with. Um, beyond that, you want to make sure all of this fits you exactly the way that you want it to. So it's very important that those developer tools are available to make that fit possible. And we offer a number of developer tools um, from custom application creation to an integration platform, um, something like Zapier, for example, where it's it's kind of like a no-code integration platform where you're able just to kind of connect things really easily. Um, business process automation um, creation we can do, uh, extensions all the way down to really sophisticated things for, for professional developers like serverless um, services. So um, when we look at all of these, all of these developer options, one important thing to note is that we're aware that you know, organizations and just individual people approach Zoho with different kinds of technical ability. So our developer tools range from offering no-code tools to low-code tools and to pro-code tools. And so this distinction is really important because it means, you know, if you're a big organization with a lot of resources, you know, you're going to be able to get the most out of us. But if you're a smaller organization that doesn't have as many um, technical or as much technical know-how and obviously hiring developers can get expensive, there are tools that are available for non-technical people to use to customize Zoho One to get what you want out of it. So the next part of Zoho One, the next layer that's important to understand are the services. And the services layer is really where you're going to see a lot of value created for your organization. Um, these are things where, you know, you might see um, another company or another vendor do an application um, that is similar to this. But for the idea of, it, of, of a service, it's taking some kind of functional, functionality and embedding it into a much more sophisticated uh, system that gives you even more productivity, that gives you even more benefits. So that's the idea of the services. And we actually recently uh, introduced three new services. So we're always, we're always creating new ones, and that is really the direction for Zoho One, is creating brand new services and finding ways where we can create um, a better experience and create more efficiency for your organization since we are the ones who are kind of providing all of these all of these pieces. So um, we'll go through some of these because I think this is some of the coolest stuff that's in Zoho One in addition to kind of just the very comprehensive 
um, offering that it, it has. So AI, business intelligence, messaging, search, telephony, identity, and SSO, provisioning and access management. The last two are more on the administrative side, um, but you know we'll quickly go over some of these. So let's start with AI. Um, obviously, artificial intelligence is something that's really important, and it is a technology really of the future that's slowly coming into uh, being today. Well, we are working on that. We have a R&D team. Um, Zoho has over you know, 7,500 employees um, across a number of countries. So we have a, a very uh, sophisticated R&D team that is working on these kinds of new technologies. And while we have um, implemented AI um, in a ways that our users can use, for example, um, recommending the best time for a salesperson to contact someone or automatically creating you know pivot charts and tables out of spreadsheet data stuff like that um, we have also implemented it in the back end to do the data cleaning to monitor logs to make sure that you know uh, our system is incredibly secure to make sure that there's no phishing schemes that are being ran. So AI is something that we're working on and it's something that we're already working into our, our operating system. Now, another really important thing we offer is what we do with uh, business intelligence. So we offer unified analytics for your entire business right out of the box. And that is something that is, is really valuable because typically, you know, business intelligence and really deep cross-functional reporting has really only been available for really large organizations that have the money um, for this kind of a thing. But since we understand all of the data that's being put into the system, since we understand the way all of it's automatically structured, because again, we're the ones who's created all of this, we can then automatically create a range of reports and dashboards that you don't have to do anything to, to get that insight out of, right? You start adding data into the system. For example, you start using the CRM to do your sales, and then you'll automatically have all of these uh, sales-related reports that are taking in that data, visualizing it for you, so you can get the most out of it. And as this continues and as you use more things in Zoho One, so say for example, you use our accounting system, well, now we can put sales and accounting data together and we can actually make a blended report or blended dashboards. And we can do all of that right out of the box. So um, if you're interested in learning more about this in particular or these services that I'm talking about in general, um, we have another webinar later on in the week um, that's the Zoho One Services webinar, and we'll actually go in more in depth on these things. For example, we show a whole demo of how um, we do business intelligence. We show how you can build reports. We show what those those out of the box reports look like as well. So um, you should check that out if you wanna if you wanna learn more about this. Um, so another really important piece of this uh, of the operating system is the way that we improve communication. The way that we allow people to collaborate. So Zoho One includes a unified communication um, stack, essentially. So Click is the cornerstone of this, which is our chat-based team communication platform. And what it does is it's, it's kind of like Slack, if you're familiar with this, but we would argue that it, it goes beyond you know, what even Slack can do. Um, so it, it breaks conversations down into groups, channels, um, and in individual one-to-one uh, -one conversations. But it also does chat, audio, video, and web conferencing as well. And there is a mobile app, so you can get, you know, all of that out. Uh, you can get all of that functionality, whether you're in the office, whether you're at the airport, or whatever. Right? You can you'll be able to do all of those things. So the video conferencing the web conferencing. But the thing that's really powerful about Click, and this is what turns it into a service for us, this is what means it's a part of this operating system in a much deeper way, is that Click is embedded in all of our different applications as a chat bar, essentially. So you can be in Zoho Mail here, for example, and on the bottom, 
you'll have Zoho uh, Click available. So you can have your chats with your groups, your channels, individual people, but you can also still do the web uh, audio calling, the video calling, the conferences, all of those things are still possible right from within that window. So the idea here is that by offering this chat bar across all of these other applications, we're able to provide additional continuity and additional context. So you're not having to hop around between different tabs, different applications. And if you're say on a call or you're on a chat with someone and you're looking at a document, you can just have that open while you're looking at the document and be able to discuss as need be. So there's a number of very cool things also that are a part of this, but that's, that's the idea here. Um, and again, as I mentioned, there's, there's more to it, right? With the audio calling, video calling, screen sharing, all sorts of cool stuff like that. Um, and even more importantly, again, the idea of the context is that that chat bar will vary by application. So you see on the right here, there's different icons because they're going to offer different functionality depending on the app that you're using click within, right? So we're, we're trying to be as smart as possible here. So that is messaging. Um, now we'll get into another really cool thing that you, you don't really hear about this very much, which is search. And typically when we, we hear about search, we think about something like Google, which allows us to search for things on the web. What we have here with Zia Search is really a, a, a single search for all of your business data. So for example, you go here, you add a customer's um, or, or say an employee's um, email address, and now you'll be able to see all of the places that this person is mentioned. Or if it's a customer, you put that customer email in there and you'll be able to see their CRM record. You'll be able to see their um, help desk tickets. You'll be able to see what emails you've exchanged with them. All of, or you'll be able to see conversations that have been taking place around them, maybe on your um, company internet, right? So it's one search for for everything uh, in your in your business, and it even is integrated really nicely into things like mail and other applications. Where you again you click that email address and then you search across everything that you're doing. Similarly, you can use keywords like a trade show, search the words trade show, and see everywhere that that's popping up, which can include chats emails it can be with the documents it really will span the board here so this is something that's really powerful and it's something that's taken us about 10 years to actually do and as i mentioned you don't hear about this kind of a feature or functionality very often in our industry and a big reason for that is because no one's really figured it out <laughs> so we're very proud of what we've done um, and we're going to keep making improvements and in, in everything the thing that's really crucial about something like this is that in addition to being able to have access to all of this data and to be able to search for it, which again is not easy just to start with, you then need to be able to respect all the permissions, profiles, and access rights that are established in your organization. So for example, if you have an intern who goes into the search bar and says corporate finance data, and obviously they're not supposed to be seeing that, well, then it won't appear for them because it was never made available to them in the first place, right? So every user that uses the search um, will be limited in some way, depending on what their role is within your organization to what they can see. And all of that, of course, is customizable by you and your organization. So that's one of the things that's that's pretty cool. Now onto these new services, the new services that we released were telephony and then these next two that I'll talk about very quickly. Um, so telephony is something that's really important. Um, and typically telephony is siloed, right? When you create, uh, when, you, when you integrate your phone system with different applications, uh, you have to do each one of these separately. And this can be a real pain because you know you've gone and you've gotten a provider like Vonage or Ring Central or something, and you're integrating it with 
your sales system, with your help desk, with your HR system, whatever. And if you're using different vendors for all of these different pieces, it's not clear if any of this will, will really work or how long it'll take to get this up and running because each project will be different. So what we've introduced is something called PhoneBridge, which is a single integration point for everything within Zoho One. So you go and get a uh, telephony or PBX provider, you integrate it one time with PhoneBridge, and then you can just turn on the integration in all of these different Zoho applications for these different departments. And, um, you know, we understand the business context. So you can do this with, with any of these providers and still get the, the real productivity and the real value that you want to see as a business. So for example, once you integrate the, uh, the phone system and you turn it on for CRM, you'll have things like click to call within CRM where you can just click the button and it'll automatically dial the customer for you. Even cooler is you can actually accept calls across 30 applications or more applications in Zoho One. So that means if you're a salesperson and you're looking at your email, you know, you'll see that a call is coming through while you're in your mail and we'll pull in all of that CRM or some, some top level CRM data that lets you know who it is that's actually calling you. So you don't have to do the mad dash to the CRM to try to figure out what's going on and look up a customer and all sorts of things. You'll just be able to see that top of line information. You can accept the call and then you can just very smoothly move back over to the CRM if you need to look more at the record to understand where you're at with that client. Right, so this is something that's available across all of our applications. Um, and again, it provides that contextual information. So in addition to the CRM data, it'll also provide the help desk data. If, if, if there needed to be some recruitment data, it could do that as well. Um, we're pulling in information into the telephony window to give you an extra um, you know, sense of, of who you're talking to while at the same time not sacrificing the context of what you're actually doing. So if you're reviewing a document, if you're reviewing a contract, you know, you can do that right there from within that window and, and not have to bounce around and feel very scattered. So the next two um, services are on the identity, our identity and SSO and provisioning and access management. And these are some more administrative type features, but they're really handy. And I'll give you the really quick, um, a really quick look at them. So identity and SSO means um, we're talking about, you know, how an account is um, created and how other pieces of software understand that it's actually you that's trying to sign in from that account, right? So for example, um, the, and then of course, single sign-on is SSO. So SSO, single sign-on. So the idea here, the, the, the core point, which I'll just cut to the chase here, is that you can now deploy and launch third-party tools from Zoho One, which means you can go um, to Office 365, you can go to G Suite, you can go to Zendesk, you can go to MailChimp, you can go to Asana, you can use any of these popular third party tools and you can bring them inside Zoho One and then sign into Zoho One and then just launch those other apps from within Zoho One without having to sign in again. So pretty cool. So let's take uh, G Suite for example. Um, if you are in Zoho One, you'll be able to go to the marketplace. And from within the marketplace, you can choose to install G Suite. And after you install it, you'll see that Gmail, G Suite, Google Docs, Google Sheet, all of these things are brought within Zoho One. So that means that if you want to sign into them or you want to use them, all you have to do is just click and it'll open and you can go from there. So that is what we've done there um, with identity and SSO. Provisioning and access management is really just a step beyond that, which allows you to centralize all of the administrative functions 
um, like provisioning and access management um, within Zoho One. So when we launched Zoho One, we already did that for all of our applications, but we found that people and our customers still needed third-party applications, they still need custom applications, and they still need marketplace extensions to make their account as, or their, their business as powerful as possible. So we've simplified all of this, and now you can provision Zoho apps um, within Zoho One, but then you can also provision custom apps, third-party apps, and marketplace extensions as well. So you can do all of that. So for example, you add G Suite to Zoho One, and once you've added it to Zoho One, you can then say, okay, these users all need to be added to G Suite. They need to be given this kind of role and permission um, to access these kinds of documents, or they need to be able to send email or not send email. You can do all of that from within Zoho One. And here are some screenshots of how that works, right? You go into the marketplace, and then after choosing what you want, you'll be able to come into this screen and add those add those users to those apps. Um, and you can do this by group, and you can do it uh, conditionally as well, where you can set a series of, of uh, if-then kind of rules to say, you know, if someone is an entry-level salesperson, what kind of um, access and or what kind of apps do they need and then what kind of access to those apps should they have so you can do all of those things as well so these are the services within Zoho one um, we've ran through a lot of information here but all of this stuff is is really important because again these are not necessarily just applications what they are are services that are deeply integrated and deeply a part of the Zoho One operating system, right? Um, and that's that's the big advantage here is that it allows us as a software provider to do even more work for you all because um, you know we understand our own system and we're taking different applications and turning them into services which create even more value. Um, for you. So that, um, you know, has probably been quite a bit of information already. And we've talked about the platform, which allows you to customize, integrate, and extend um, Zoho One. We've talked about these services, which add a whole bunch of really cool value because they're able to solve problems that individual software vendors um, can't really deal with. And now we're going to come back to apps, right? So these applications, um, there are, you know, a number of applications that are within Zoho One. Um, and these are applications to help you improve business processes, right? So you have things like a CRM and a CRM is something that you use to you know have leads come into and then to go through your sales pipeline where you're converting leads into contacts you're creating deals you're moving those deals through stages and you're trying to close them while keeping track of how everything looks in your funnel where where the stoppages are where things need to be worked on right it gives you this really great way to get a complete view of your customers while also you know, improving your your sales cycles. So there are all of these applications like that. And like I said, Zoho One has over 45 applications. And these applications, um, in addition to having a web app, also come with a mobile version. So that means that for that CRM app that you can use on your on your laptop or desktop computer, there's also a mobile app for your um, iOS and Android devices. So if you're on the road and you're meeting with clients, you can update those contact records um, from your car or from the restaurant or from their office or wherever you happen to be, right? So obviously, um, it's with 45 applications, there's a lot to talk about. And really, the thing that's the most important thing is for you to think about 
you know, what kind of processes need improvement within your organization? Where are you trying to make a difference? And, and what are the things that are most important right now? Because if you understand where you're at with that, then we can help you map those requirements to these different applications. Because obviously there's a lot of them and you might not use all of them. Um, on average, customers use about 18 of our applications. Um, and that's an average, right? So there's plenty of customers that use fewer. Um, but the main thing is picking the places that are going to be the most important for you as an organization, talking to us and then seeing, you know, which application does that actually mean starting with? And we can, we can help you with that. I can also help answer some of those questions today. Um, and I can give you a resource to, to, you know, to continue on this, this process. So when we talk about apps being able to improve processes, um, of course, the question for you probably to me immediately will be, well, what kind of processes are you talking about? What kind of things can you do? So I'm going to quickly go over a few processes that we, we can deal with. So this is a little diagram of a, you know, very kind of basic way of looking at um, going from lead to cash, right? So you've generated a lead and we can help you do that with, you know, um, we can create a web, we, we have a website builder, we have an e-commerce tool um, that allows you to build a shopping cart, we have live chat, we have forms, we have a whole bunch of things that you can use to generate your lead. And once that lead is generated, it will get added to the CRM. And within the CRM, you're able to follow up with your leads and attempt to qualify them. And after you qualify them and you assign a deal to them and you're working your deal, you can create estimates from within the CRM. And those estimates can also automatically be available in an accounting system that you can also use through Zoho One. And as you have those estimates generated, you send them and get them approved. And after they're approved, you're able to close the deal and track the effectiveness of your sales pipeline. You're then able to generate and send invoices. You can have those be signed digitally with an e-signing tool. And you can then give them away to, and you can invoice them right through through paper, through email. You can give them a payment portal to go in and do. You can do recurring payments. You can take partial payments. All of these different things are possible. And then you're able to process this payment and record it within your accounting system. So all of these things Zoho One can do. And all of these things that I'm describing as one process are integrated. So that way, you know, when you're generating the invoice and you need to get it signed, you know, it's not some crazy process. It's something that's relatively straightforward and just a few clicks and you can get that sent out. So this whole idea of going from lead to cash, from having a lead to getting paid is something that Zoho One can help you with. Now, there's another piece to this, right? We've talked about lead to cash, which means we've actually created a customer so Zoho One also offers um, the ability to do customer support. We have a help desk, which is a ticketing system that is um, what we call, you know, a multi-channel ticketing system because it allows you to take support requests from email, phone, social media, live chat, and also through the web. So someone just goes onto your website and submits a ticket to you. Um, these can then be assigned to agents um, and then they'll work on them and, 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 you know, and get the issues sorted out. There's an integration there between our CRM, the sales information, and the de and desk, Zoho Desk, which is our help desk. So that way you can prioritize your customer support um, depending on what kind of customer you're dealing with, how valuable are they are to your organization. You can set up SLAs, you can do all sorts of things, and both systems will be able to see relevant data. So 
the contact record in the CRM will be able to see all of the help, tic help desk tickets and you'll be able to view those. Um, and similarly, the support system will be able to see the value of that customer so your agents you know, aren't um, dropping the ball with an important client. Now, adding this even further, um, I mentioned um, that we have our um, accounting system. So obviously, once you've received a payment, you can match the payments to the invoice and do your basic record keeping. Um, you can manage and process the order, which includes integrating with shipping carriers like FedEx and UPS and DHL. And then there's a whole inventory and order management system that we'll be able to um, assign that inventory, particular inventory to that invoice. Um, and you'll be able to, you know, uh, get refill notifications for your inventory as needed. Um, all sorts of good things like that are, are all possible. So this is uh, just a really, you know, just basic idea of what's included in here uh, in Zoho One, but all of these things are, passive, are, are possible. So now I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick look at the admin panel and um, the admin panel is where you're going to start with Zoho One. Um, it's the place that you're going to sign in and it's the way, it's the place you're gonna set things up. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to my demo account here. And this demo account is a Zoho One account, obviously. And as you can see, it has a whole bunch of different applications that have been turned on, right? So that's the first thing that's important to realize with, with Zoho One. You sign up to it and you'll be able to go in and turn on the applications that you want to use, right? Obviously this one, like I said, has a number of things that have been turned on because we use this account to show off a whole bunch of stuff. But ultimately, you are the one who's in control of which applications you, you want to use and who you want to deploy them to. And the big upside here of this kind of Zoho One model is that it, you don't have to agonize over every little thing that you want to use or every tool that you're trying um, to or that you want to implement for maybe just a few people or a few people on your team. Um, you're able to just go in, turn on the things that you want and deploy them with the right sets of permissions um, so that way people can get value out of them and their jobs can be improved, right? And they can just be more efficient, more productive, they can work more happily, spend more time doing the things that are more valuable to your organization. So this is where um, those applications will show up um, and you'd be able to click and open them right from here. As you can see, we have custom applications that have been deployed here and um, we don't have any integrated, but if you had, for example, Office 365 or G Suite or MailChimp, they would appear here as well, right? You can create also a little, little tabs. So for example, um, all of your marketing apps can just go into one area, make it a little easier to find things. You can also search for things um, by just going to this little search bar. As I mentioned earlier, there is um, uh, Zia Search, which allows you to search across all of your business data. That's also available really conveniently right here as well. So this is the launcher screen, and this is where everyone will will be coming in and, and you know signing in, and will be launching different applications in your organization. Now, since you're on this call, you're we're doing this webinar. Um, it's more likely that you are. A, um, a business owner, an executive, um, someone who is on the IT team, someone who's um, your software administrator, a software administrator. So for all of that, for all of you people, um, the admin panel is going to be really important for setting things up. So you'll go into the admin panel here. And once you're in the admin panel, you'll see um, a number of things. So for example, the first thing you'll see up here is just some basic information about who um, 
about about users within the organization, right? So how many users are there? How many have been added in the last seven days? How many have how many are without mailboxes? How many apps do you have turned on? How many groups have you created, right? So this is giving you a look of every of all of your software usage essentially on this page. And that is something that's really, really crucial because a lot of times, um, especially when you start looking at a larger organizations, they have no idea, you know, all the different software they're using. They have no idea which applications are turned on or not. They have no idea which, which are things that people are actually getting value out of, right? So you're able to see all of this information from, from this page, including sign-in reports. So for example, if we go here, we can see who are the most signed in users, right? So David Ingus here, for example, has signed in and the last sign in was three days ago, right? Or where are the sign in locations coming from, right? This could be a concern if, you know, you're based in, say, San Francisco, where I live, and all of a sudden you're seeing that there's a bunch of people signing in from Brazil for some reason, right? That obviously would be a major security concern. So having a lot of this top level information is really important and crucially, right, this idea of utilized applications, how much are people actually using these things, right? You see that there's applications at the top here, Orcusly, Inventory, Flow, there's actually getting usage, but down here, things like Sprints and Sign, they're not really being used, right? So if you were paying for all of these things individually, that would obviously be a big problem. With Zoho One though, um, the fact that it is all bundled up into one pricing option makes it easier to look at something like this to see that employees aren't actually using the tools that they're supposed to be using. But it also gives you a quick idea of what do we need to have more training on? What do we need to do a better job of rolling out so we can get the kind of adoption in our organization that we wanna see? So all of this is something that's available just right here from this dashboard. And I would honestly say that this dashboard in itself is something you almost never see in our industry because it's things are just so fragmented, they're so scattered, and they're so kind of broken. So this is such a huge thing for organizations to have. Um, after you set up your organization, you'll then be able to add applications. So these are the various applications that are in the system. And to add an application, you basically hit add and you know, we've pretty much turned everything on, but if you wanted to add one, you would just hit add and you would just choose which users should have access and there you go. Um, when we look at users, um, again, we can see all the people in our organization. We can see how many apps they have access to, when was the last time they logged in. And if we go in and look at this record more closely, um, we get even more information. So we can see which apps they're a user of, which apps they're, um, what the roles are they have. So for example, this person's an admin in this application. We can see the groups, we can manage their email addresses, we can reset their password, reset multi-factor authentication, set security policies, look at their general account act activity, right? So this isn't good, this person's never signed in, you know? Um, so we'd obviously wanna know that. Um, we can see their basic information as well um, right here. So all of this stuff is really great. Um, and of course we have groups, so you can create groups within your organization, maybe that correspond to different departments. So marketing, for example, here's a person who's been added to this group. Um, we can set up conditional assignment. So anytime someone's added to this group, they'll automatically be added to the applications that they'll need with the pr proper um, permission settings. Um, all of this stuff, really important. Security, as you can see, you can mandate password policies across your organization. Um, you can restrict um, login IP addresses. So for example, you can mandate that people can only sign in from the office Wi-Fi. Um, and if they don't, they just won't be able to sign in. And this is a way that you can you know, control um, clocking in and stuff like that. Um, last but not least, I just wanna show real quick the marketplace. So the marketplace offers, this is where you can, you know, you can add those third party applications. So for example, you go to directory apps and you can see here are a number of applications that we have integrations with that you can turn on really easily. Um, I showed you this graphic 
or the screenshot, right? You go to G Suite, you hit install, um, and then that will automatically be added to your Zoho One account. So that is basically the quick little demo I wanted to show you. And the reason I'm not gonna go more in depth is because it all really depends on what you're trying to do. And that's what I wanna help you with right now, right? I wanna try to help you figure out, um, you know, what, where do you need to start? Which applications do you want to, to be using? Um, when we launched Zoho One, we launched with 35 applications. And within two years, we've added 10 more and we've added a whole bunch of other stuff. Meanwhile, the price has stayed the same. Um, so the price is really aggressive and it's because we're really trying to disrupt the industry. Um, but ultimately we're trying to pack as much value as possible. Um, and ideally we're trying to get these prices even lower really, cause that's, that's what we want to do. Um, so that is the operating system for business. That is, that is all we're talking about today. Um, and as far as the next steps and the next things to do, um, I'm going to take your questions in just a moment, but I highly recommend everybody go to this link right here, zoho.com slash one slash concierge. And when you go to this link, you'll be able to schedule a free consultation with us um, where you're talking to our concierge team, not our sales team or anything like that. And you can, in the, in the form that you use to set up the call, You'll be able to list, you know, the pain points that you have in your organization, which software you're currently using and what you're trying to do with Zoho One. And we will then have a quick half hour call with you and give you um, the ideas of, of where to start with Zoho One, what's going to be possible, what's not going to be possible, and if there's other software out there that we could actually recommend to you. So we'll do everything we can to help you take that next step of mapping your requirements into Zoho One so you can have as productive a trial as possible. Um, and you can always, you know, also always extend your trial. We're always, we're pretty um, lenient on all that as well. So we want you to have the option to really kick the tires and to be able to see if this is going to work for you. Um, but obviously you need to know where to start. I'll try to answer your questions in just a moment, but the concierge team is really a great place for that, okay? Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.